Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, uh, Shangsha Godin and the organizer to uh, invite me here. And uh, thanks, Eric, to arrange this uh, uh, as a speaker to, to say something uh, from our perspective. Uh, I, in the morning when I registered, I, I found I'm in a European conference. So uh, everybody is talking about European positions. So uh, since uh, space exploration is uh, for whole human beings, so I would like to talk in more general, uh, general on, uh, on the impact of space age to uh, human civilization. So I will start with the relation with the scientific uh, science and technology development and the progress of uh, civilization. Let's take an example of fire. When the uh, fire was discovered or uh, utilized by human beings, the language uh, mu were much more developed because you are sitting around the fire, you're talking about your stories and what happened during the day, and uh, your world became more rich. Uh, you, you have uh, you have uh, happiness and uh, threatened risk uh, during the day. So that was uh, a push for civilization in language. And when you have agriculture, when we have agriculture and cultivation, we settle down. And when you settle down, our civilization is progressing uh, more. We have a language, we have a written language, we have uh, observation of stars. You are sitting down, you look at the skies, and when you have, a, when the, the, the human beings has printing technology, uh, the culture propagate. So more and more people understand the same thing and we became more culturalized. And uh, when we have more technology on navigation and observation and uh, shaping, so we go around the world, we know the world is, uh, is around and uh, we have market economy and the global became uh, much smaller. So when we have uh, our modern science technology in the past 400 years, we have a lot of enlightenment uh, because of uh, this uh, development of science and technology. We have uh, democracy, we have republic, we have uh, uh, in the past 120 years, we have uh, aeronautic and space technology. So I will concentrate on what space technology, science and technology has influenced influence our civilization. The first enlightenment we got from space is since uh, Gagarin. When he was in, 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 the, in the orbit, it's only uh, one orbit actually, it's a little bit more than one hour, 90 minutes, and he look at, he take a moment looking outside of the window and he said Earth. What he say is curvature of the Earth, and before that you say most uh, navigation, uh, even on airplane, you say more or less flat, horizon, and you say the atmosphere, the blue uh, ocean and white color of uh, cloud, it, it was really, a, it is still continuing. So I took uh, comments uh, from uh, Anna McLean from uh, 2018 is still happening. Everybody, astronauts going to space, they have the same feeling. Huh? So he said, you will really uh, recognize your, yourself uh, as a single person you will never meet. Any single person you will never meet, you feel you must, you're most in common with him or with her, uh, rather than difference. And for the Chinese astronaut also, uh, uh, Liu Yang said, uh, in space, human uh, emotion, human emotion will be strongly enlarged or reduced. Family love, friendship will be infinitely magnified and uh, fame and uh, wealth, gain and loss will be infinitely reduced, narrowed. So these things are still continue. And this first enlightenment actually has a lot of impact on human civilization during the six days. People are asking, oh, you can go to space, why don't you show me a whole world, whole Earth picture? So there are movement in the 66, and the first whole picture, uh, the picture of the whole Earth was taken in 1968 from the US NASA satellite of a geostationary satellite, and that was uh, 
a very, very big impact. But uh, the most impact, we call it the second enlightenment, is coming from Apollo 8. So during the Christmas time of 1968, the astronauts, they are flying in the lunar orbit the first time for the human beings so far from the Earth. And uh, the commander said, oh God, look at that picture. So bring me the color film. And the other astronauts said, no, no, this which is not in our schedule. They have uh, schedules do this and afterward do that. It's really not in their schedule. And Bowman said, no, 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 bring me the picture. So they take a color photo the first time from so far. So what they, they say is this. So this is a famous picture called Earth Rise, and everybody know it. It, it became a one single word, Earth Rise. And in the 40 years anniversary of Apollo landing on the moon, um, Michael Collin uh, said uh, quite a long sentence. I pick up only uh, a few of them. And uh, what he said, I really believe that if uh, political leaders of the world could see their planet from the distance of so far, and their lookout uh, would be uh, fundamentally changed. The all important boundaries are disappeared and not, you cannot hear any noise, and the Earth is crying out for unified understanding, blue and white. So this was uh, in um, 40 years anniversary. And now what happened is 50 years, more than 50 years passed. So the impact in the 60s has a lot of things. Uh, I just pick up a few, uh, spring, uh, silent spring, everybody knows it, and operation many of spaceship Earth. So if we consider Earth as a spaceship, all the human beings are astronauts on the same spaceship, and limit to gross, gross which is a Roman uh, uh, club, and uh, very recently, uh, Jorge Bonet has wrote a book uh, called uh, one Can We Survive in 1,000 Century? Uh, they are all talking about the same thing. So if you look at the Earth from outside of the Earth, and you will get the same enlightenment. But all these are coming from very few uh, limited astronauts. There are only about 600 astronauts has been in the low Earth orbit. There are only 25 Apollo astronauts, and they are dying. There are only a few of them left. And last year I was uh, in, a, in a conference, and uh, Sean Shaka will invite me there, and there's an Apollo astronaut, and uh, Charlie Duke, I think. He said he is the youngest lunar astronaut. He's 87 years old, and he said, I'm still the youngest. It's true, huh? So after 50 years, we have never went back there, never go back there. So it is, it is uh, quite uh, something we have to think about. Now we are talking about the motivation. And those people are pilot engineers, a few scientists, and very few uh, millionaires. There are seven millionaires has been on the, in the International Space Station. And very recently, there are a few they were in the station and also on the uh, near Earth orbit. So if we put more people there, philosophers, artists, thinkers, writers, uh, even politi politicians, uh, I remove the figure in the politicians, you can imagine who you want to put there, and uh, they will think, if you put them there, they will think like uh, um, Colin uh, said, uh, they will think about, they don't see the boundary, they don't hear the noise, they will think the whole human beings have the same shared future. So this is uh, uh, what we should do. So for conclusion, I have uh, just three points. Human civilization uh, progressed with the uh, advancement of science and technology. This has been demonstrated along the history. And in particular, in the past 120 years, aviation and space enabled us to understand our position in the universe and how fragile of our planet Earth is, and in particular, our biosphere. Uh, people say that we are destroying the Earth. No, the, the Earth will be there. Even the human died, the Earth will be there. 
but the biosphere is what we should protect. And the motivation for space exploration should include sending more people there and let them to see our Earth from far and therefore the, we can enlarge the impact of space science and technology to human civilization. That's conclude my share. Thank you very much.